What's up, you guys? Hey, it's John with Vision 360 Fire Financials. Hey, hope you guys are all well today. Today we're going to be covering an awesome topic on why the markets are red, but I am still cash flowing, guys. But before we dig into it, if you're not already, please consider subscribing. Also, hit that like button. Drop me a comment down below. And let me know what you're doing in this typical market right now to increase your passive income. All right, guys. So first off, let's check this out right on the screen right now. So you can see here, obviously, this newer dividend portfolio that I've had over the last few months. Now we're up to over $100 in passive income a year on this portfolio. So not bad at all, considering our market value is just right around 3400 on it. And we can obviously see over the years here, our growth on this is going to be phenomenal as well. So our three-year dividend CAGR on this portfolio right now is just over 11% which is very phenomenal. And we have a multitude of all the different sectors in here, different companies that are amazing. So there's a link down below as well if you guys wanna follow the portfolio as well and kind of mimic it yourself. So I made some changes and updates to it over the last few months and kind of reduced the core tranches to be able to get it down to a basket of really, really solid, what I think will be really good long-term growth players that have really good dividend growth uh, as well. So. Anyways, if that sounds like that interests you, definitely go and check that out down below. Link is down below. And then, like I said, you see all the different payments here. So this is one thing. I always love this tracker sheet. It tells me all the different payments and when they're going to come through. But like I said, guys, these are for holding awesome you know, cash-flowing companies, companies that make proprietary products. For example, P&G, Procter & Gamble, guys, right here. So Downey, this is... You know, this is the key right here to invest for cash flow with appreciation and not only total appreciation, but, uh, you know, dividends as well included in there. So not only for appreciation, but also dividend growth investing. So like I said, I'm always going to be buying this product because obviously I want to keep my clothes clean and smelling good. You know, P&G makes so many different products. These are just some of the ones I use right here. Deodorant. I'm always going to be using this one. This one's a natural one as well. And it's also harmless and it's not tested on animals, which I love. But like I said, another good one is lavender. I love that smell. All these are lavender. Right here, my sheets, downy sheets. When I go to take uh, my clothes to the dryer, right? After I wash them, I'm going to put those in there, right? Keeps them smelling nice and fresh. And also, it provides a softener for it as well. Tide, another PNG. So. Like I said, guys, that's just four products right there that I use, you know, on a couple times a week for a weekly basis, guys. So obviously it's going to be doing well right there. And they have so many of their brands. I now have a, a niece that uses diapers, right? So they have like Pampers. They got a lot of different baby diapers, different baby products. So, and like I said, guys, they go into the laundry detergents, etc. But this is just one of many, many different companies that are in here that make awesome products. Like for example, Apple's in here. Apple makes my beats. I happen to have two pairs of these. And like I said, the list goes on and on guys. So definitely resist, res, reset, <laughs> shoot, tongue twister. Recession resistant guys. Gosh, I'm gonna need something myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, anyways, so that's what you guys wanna invest in. So ones, don't invest for total appreciation. That's number one, but invest for, or excuse me, only total share appreciation, you invest for total overall appreciation with dividends reinvested. That's what gets your growth. Now, the second thing is invest in recession resistant and necessity businesses. So that being said, right here, P&G is one of those necessity businesses. I can go through this whole entire list and pick them out, right? People are going to be buying phones still, guys. I mean, right here, they're going to be buying, you know, protein mixes, products, right? I could go on and on and on, but here's some main ones. Chevron, people need petrol, right? Even with going to EVs, there's so much petrol that's used for generation. Clorox company, guys, Honeywell, Home Depot, Lowe's, Hershey, Intel, J&J, &J, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Lowe's, McDonald's, Microsoft, Starbucks. There's so many of them, guys. And like I said, they're all in here. So that's going to continue to grow no matter where the economy is. So that's number two. Invest in recession-resistant and necessity-based companies. They're always going to have a need. And they'll be able to keep on driving higher margins and profits, even with inflation, because they're inflationary products that they can charge more for all the time. 
and unfortunately they do. So they can keep that moat. Now, the third thing, third thing is keep a long-term approach, guys. So Rome was not built overnight, as you guys already know. So you got to be able to keep that long-term mindset. And that long-term mindset can sometimes go with looking at the amount of growth that you're doing on a weekly and a monthly basis. I always like to see where I'm going and it's encouraging because if I were to look at this a few months ago, I was at hardly any cash flow in this portfolio. Now I'm at 110 a year. So like I said, it just snowballs and compounds and 110 turns into a thousand, thousand turns into 10, 10,000 turns into a hundred, hundred thousand turns into a million. Boom. Just like that. And it takes time though. So you got to be patient. This is a long-term approach, but here we go. Conservative numbers on the screen right now starting with a thousand dollars portfolio at a seven percent dividend CAGR so that's your compound annual growth of your dividend and then a three percent starting yield which is not unrealistic in this environment currently and that seven percent is actually fairly conservative as well guys like I said that's a good long-term growth but it's not too conservative and it's not super aggressive and then a quarterly share price of about two percent which is about middle of the road where we want to be and like I said we look right here, adding, this would be considering adding $1,000 a month to this portfolio. You see here by year 10 alone, you're at just under 200,000. At year 20, you'd be at just over 700,000. Year 30, it gets really pretty at over 2 million with cash flowing almost 50,000 in dividends alone. And guys, this is just putting $1,000 a month in. If you wanna get really, really strong about the fire movement or putting money away or you make a lot more money so like i'm going to be putting a lot more money like thousand dollars is minimum what i'm putting into my portfolio right now even and this is now me when i'm not even making as much guys i'm well, making a decent amount but not that much i'll be making way more here in the near future so that's really not that much especially in today's environment thousand dollars a month is not that much at all especially if you're married and you can generate over six figures so if you change that number to you know, do 40000 a year, which seems like a lot. And it definitely is quite a bit of money, but uh, it's not unrealistic. You know, then your 20-year outlook would be looking like almost 60000 alone in dividends, guys. And then if you go to 30, that's 155000 So, and then obviously if you start with a higher starting value, it's going to have longer time to compound. So, the third thing is keep a long-term approach, guys. Really, this is not something that happens overnight. So you want to keep a long-term approach, right? P&G didn't make awesome products like this when they first started, right? I mean, they made good products, obviously, because they got off the ground running. But over time, they developed technologies and they grew their product line. So you got to think in that regard as well. I'm going to grow my passive income. And so we can grow through real estate, dividends, uh, passive income, interest on certain things, right? and also on even like our tax-free buckets as well, Index Universal Life. I have videos on that as well. So that's what you gotta think. Think about an investor mindset. And I think Robert Kiyosaki really puts it really well here. And I'll let this play just for a little bit. This is a little bonus here. Again, this is, you get a job. And this was my poor dad, go to school, get a job, get your PhD. And so this here is cash flow. So the income comes in and it goes out this way. First line of expense is tax. So this is a poor person's cash flow pattern. It's not how much money you make. Most people, you know, they, I don't care if you have a PhD or no school at all, but they can't control the cash flowing out through their expenses. And so that's why people like Susie Orman say, cut up your credit cards, live below your means, because you're a spendaholic. So that's a poor person. This is a middle class person's cash flow pattern. And this is where the house comes in. They, first thing, you know, most kids do when they get pay raise and all that, they buy themselves a bigger house. Oh, my house is an asset. Now who tells you that? Your real estate agent, of course. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because they, they want to give you this false sense of security while you're getting screwed. Exactly. You know, but when you look at what happens with a house, a personal, I mean a personal residence, something I live in, the money comes in, it goes out, and this is middle class, but it also goes out through a mortgage, mortgage payments, oh, but I don't have a mortgage. You still have taxes, you still, 
you know, Hawaii just raised their property taxes on me, which is probably why I'm going to sell and go get out of Hawaii. But you have taxes and you have upkeep. So money's always flowing out. So that's why your house is not an asset, it's because it's taking money from your pocket. So very simply said, assets put money in my pocket, liabilities take money from my pocket. All right, guys, you heard it well right there from the legend himself. So he's obviously a huge real estate person. That's what I'm going to get into as well, more real estate, but I'm going to continue to invest for passive income with dividends. And if you want to have easy sleep at night, dividends are the way to go, guys. So no matter what, you know, no matter where you are in life, honestly, you can always start this journey. So like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed that. What he's saying there, right, speaks the truth. So always think about that. Is it an asset or is it a liability? So if it can put money in your pocket and it can generate you cash flow, such as dividends, passive income, real estate, et cetera, and it pays more than the expense that it costs, that can be an asset. If it's a liability, it's costing you money, it's taking money out of the pocket. So always think about that. So those are the three awesome things that you guys must remember to be able to be very successful. So to be able to continue to cash flow even when the markets are not doing well. So hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, you guys take care.